Getting started with MapKit is as easy as dragging a map view onto your view controller. With just a few constraints to set the view in place, the map view will display a default location. The MK map view comes with six different map types. The first kind is the standard map type. This is just a map with line drawings. The satellite map view provides satellite imagery of the location. The hybrid view provides roads, landmarks, and other information over the satellite view. There's a satellite flyover and a hybrid flyover, which provides a 3D representation of the map. Finally, there's the muted standard, which suppresses all the various noise to focus on your map data. Maps comes with all sorts of customization options that you can set in Interface Builder or on the object itself. For instance, you can disable pinching and rotation gestures to prevent the user from navigating the map accidentally. Uh, Interface Builder also allows you to customize whether you like buildings, traffic, or points of interest. You can also choose to show a compass or the scale, but you'll have to make those changes in code. Visual components in MapKit, such as the compass and the scale, have a property of a type of MK feature visibility, which indicates how the element will appear. Visible means the element will be visible, whereas hidden actually hides the element. Adaptive means the element will appear or disappear based on the map state. You also have the ability to show a user's location on the map, but by simply clicking the checkbox, doesn't absolve you for asking for permission. You must create a location manager and make a permission request depending on the needs of your app. Now that you have an idea of MapKit, let's integrate it into our map. So here you can see I have the demo app open. First, what we need to do is create a new view controller. So open up main.storyboard over here. And from the object library, you're going to select this and drag out a view controller like so. We'll grab that and just drag it onto the main storyboard. Now we need to create a backing class for that. So I'm going to select interesting places here. I'm going to click File, New File. And then what I'm going to choose is a Cocoa Touch class like so. And click Next. I'm going to choose the type to be a UI view controller. And I'm going to give this the name map view controller, like so. And I'll click next and then create. Now back in our main.storyboard here, we're going to select this, open up our right pane, and in our identity inspector, we're going to select map view controller like so. So that gets that initial setup out of the way. And let's zoom out a little bit and just rearrange this. We'll move this over here, like so. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add an actual map view to our map view controller. So we'll open up the object library again and just type map view. And you can see we have map kit view. So you can simply drag it out here and you just can you can put it anywhere here. Okay, with that done, we now need to pin it to all sides of the view controller. So let's open up the pin dialog or add new constraints. And we're going to set this to zero all the way around and we're gonna uncheck constraints to margins. Then once we're all set, we'll just click add new constraints here. And we got this going up here. So let's put that there, click this button here, map view, and then we will update constraints like so. Okay, so now what we wanna do is make a link to our new view controller. So let's select our other view controller here and we need to drag a button onto the stack view. So let's open up our object library and just type in button like so. And you can see we have this button option. I'm gonna place this underneath address like so. And because we're using a stack view, we get this automatically. We don't have to worry about setting constraints. Next, what we'll do here is we'll give this a name. So I'll scoot this over here. With my button selected, I will open up my attributes inspector. And what I'm going to call this is view on map, like so. So when the user taps on the view on map, they will be taking to the map view itself and they'll see that location. Now, now what we want to do is create a segue between our button and our view controller. So I'm controlling, dragging like so. And we'll make this a modal segue. And I'm going to select this segue here. And in my attributes inspector, I'm going to give it a name map segue. And that sets that up. Okay, so let's see this in action so far. Let's build and run. Okay, so here you can see we have our world's largest chair selected. I'm gonna choose this 
view on map button like so, and it loads up our map, and you'll see that it goes right to the United States of America. So our map view is working, but it's not working the way a user would expect it to work. We would expect it to be zoomed in on the position on the location where they activated the map. Also, you'll notice that there's no way to close the map, so we need to add that as well. And it would also be kind of nice to switch between the various map views. For instance, you may want to see this line art here, but also you may also want to see the satellite view. There's also one other smaller issue is that as I zoom in here, you can see what happens is that this can rotate. Now, this can get very irritating, especially when you want to know where north is and where directions come into play. This can be really, really frustrating. So we actually want to disable rotation as well. Okay, so let's stop the simulator and head back to our storyboard. So I'm gonna select, so here we have Xcode selected. I'm stopping it here. And I'm gonna select my storyboard. Here, we'll close this over here. And I'm gonna select my map view controller and I'm gonna actually select my map view itself. Now you'll see here in the attributes inspector, we have a type and we can choose one of the various types uh, for our map. We're gonna keep standard for now. And we also have all these various features. Now, one thing I mentioned that we don't want to happen is we don't want rotation. So we can uncheck that and now the user will not be able to rotate. What would also be interesting is to have the user location shown up on the map. So we'll check that as well. Okay, so what we need now is a button to close the map. So open up your object library and drag a button out here and you can just put it in the lower left hand corner like so. And I'm gonna open up the pin button here and we'll se select this to 0, 020 and add constraints. So we have that and let's give this a name. We'll call this close like so. So that handles the closing. Now we also need a segmented control. So we'll type segmented control like so. And this will allow our users to be able to change the map type. So we can expand this as well, like this. I'm just gonna give it a little spacing here, like so. We'll hit the click the pin button and we can set this to 20. We'll add one constraint. We'll also hit the alignment button. We're gonna horizontally align in the container. Okay, so here I have the first segment selected in the attributes inspector. I'm gonna change this to standard and I'm gonna choose segment one. And for segment one, I'm gonna change this to satellite, like so. So now we have satellite and standard. Okay, now that we have the segmented control set up, in the next episode, what we'll do is add interactivity so that the user can switch between map types on demand.